Good morning, Miriam. <laughs> okay, I am going to uh, folks spotlight myself for everybody. Let's take a deep breath through our nose and out through our mouth. We're getting, uh, beginning to be the light uh, process of meditation, which I had a little uh, verbal run on uh, pre be the light meditation about how important it is that we are swinging back to the chalice that holds life and nurturing and care as the most important variable to move mankind forward as we are deeply in this transition versus the old sore way of might makes right control over and the sword and threat of inflicting pain in fact when we move into the energy of the chalice it has been proven scientifically that our brain is rewarded with the dopamines and the endorphins in the pleasure centers and let's let that be the intention for more pleasure as we move into a more caring, benevolent social system. And of course, if you're on this call, you're not getting your ide ideations, ideas, and visions from how it was or from your own programming, historical programming. We are opening up this figure eight hourglass and we are receiving divine information and guidance so that we can embody it and hold it and become it and speak it in such a way that it becomes that writing mechanism what were those old lightning rods called that caught that electricity and grounded it that's who you are you are a circuit a circuit for truth right now so our good old brains, they pretty much, whatever we focus on, expands a law of physics. So I thought we would start today's meditation with a little bit of um, group activity. So for just a moment, I am going to go to uh, gallery view. Let's take a deep breath through our nose and out through our mouth. And we're going to do, it's experimental. But let's see, if we started every day imagining and embodying the feeling and sensory state of the divine principles, the divine principles that never change, the divine principles that are informing you as a light worker here on this planet of where to put your eggs in your basket. And here they are. Truth beauty, love, goodness, omniscience, omnipotence, and the omni I can never remember. Maybe that will go unspoken today. I should have had more clary sage. I just can never remember all three O's, but we'll do our best. Okay. Let's open our hearts to the element of beauty. And I call on beautiful dear Avalon, a painter, a uh, expansion or element of the beauty principle. Avalon, tell me about something beautiful in your world right now, about 10 sentences or so. <laughs> well... <clears throat> This morning, <clears throat> excuse me, this morning, it really came to me clearly that I'm a multidimensional being from parallel universes who really have came, I come to this, to this earth, I bought it hook, line and sinker <clears throat> as reality. And now I'm breaking the spell for myself and others by painting what I know. And it isn't always conscious, but it's coming out in beauty and codes um, and in my sound work. 
which I'm getting ready to do again. But that's how, right now, that's how I know to break the spell that I've been living under and that we've all been living in. And through beauty, you are a pattern breaker. I love that. I love that title, a pattern breaker. Thank you. Johnny, can you speak to truth? Speak from your heart about truth. Personally, globally, divinely. I know about truth is it resides in each and every one of us. And every day, every moment, every hour, we get to choose truth. It is always up to us to choose truth. Truth in knowing who we are, truth in knowing why we are here, and truth in knowing that love will always sustain us. Truth in knowing that fear will never, will never overcome because love will always conquer fear. That is the truth that we will stand on and the truth that will sustain us from this day forward. And so it is. And so it is, and there are many stages ahead for you, my dear. I got the chills. Just as you sing divinely, your words and your speaking hold a silver, golden, beautiful field of light. I'm going to pass the baton of the divine principle of goodness over to dear Andrea. Um, goodness in my life is that I, um, I'm sitting in the woods at the campsite and Gaia is giving me some rain and I had to, I had to move off of my table and back under the canopy because it is raining and, and, um, so it just, you know, to remind me of the goodness of Gaia and the goodness of, um, of the spirit of mankind, of, of not mankind, but people kind. Um, there are so many things around me that are happening that don't seem right and don't seem good um, because I'm listening to somebody chopping down their trees right now. And, and yet there is a gen, I trust there is a general goodness in the world that we are, that we are striving for that will, will turn out to be the goodness of Gaia and goddess and good for all of us. And you are holding the anchor for goodness. You exude it and you embody it. And life is good. Life is good. Thank you, Andrea. And love. Right in the middle of the screen, I see Jessica in her beautiful blue beholding and holding love so perfectly. Would you like to speak? to the divine principle of love, Jessica. The birds are singing. That's all today. And that is love. Dear Miriam, for you, omnipresence, the ability to reside in the zero points of the grid of all that is everywhere and choosing to be here now is a human. Omnipresence means 
for you. I woke up today in my bed, but I also was laying down in all the sacred places around the world that we, all of us that were here today, we set in the past, in our past lives, we set those sacred places. Part of us is there, part of us is here in this circle, part of us is in the rain, in the birds that are singing for Jessica, in the leaves that are surrounding our houses, in the water that runs in the rivers, in the animals that are around us, in the eyes of the people in front of us, in their hearts, in our hearts, in the heart of the center of the universe of the great creator. It's all there and here in our hearts now, forever. Beautifully said. And Aubin, for you, omnipotence, the ability to co-create with source. How does that live within you? Aubin's muted. Um, and we, we can come back for your omnipotence edition. And I'll move into, I guess that Clary Sage kicked in, omniscience. Omniscience is to understand and know how everything works, to get it, and the ability to see the bigger picture and to be present in it. I think it is the mastery of all of the of the um, magnificent creative presence potential it's like the manifesting generator in the human design system so as a human we're always stair stepping and moving into the next thing that feels good and did you know that before you were born often maybe we'll pick you up pick you up later. Um, before you were born, you actually uh, contracted with the creator to work on specific principles. So think about it. Uh, I know for myself, truth is big. People have to tell the truth. And, and I write about telling the truth. I created a a whole process so women could release fear and tell the truth. Um, so I'm 80% truth, and the rest is beauty. I just, I just love beauty. So think about how you are fluffing up the lotus petal to complete your walk towards full enlightenment that maybe you mastered in another lifetime, beauty or love, and this time, you're working on being present everywhere and understanding the big picture. It's like a mathematical fractal kaleidoscope, the path towards enlightenment, and there are 70 steps, which of course, I just said, truth, beauty, love, goodness, omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence, seven major principles, and there are 10 steps or levels of each so it's 70 fold on this unfolding when we do the be the light procedure guess what we move past some of our resistances and limitations and we go into the field and we are able to access and fill with more of those 10 steps because we're sidestepping the human limitation and the mind. We're actually going into a parallel reality where we are perfectly aligned in everything. If we fully drop into the be the light process every time, we are assured of opening up 
and allowing the full spectrum of the 70 steps to become present within us. But why do we lose it? Why do we lose it when you, you press stop the Zoom and you go off? Because we are reactive beings. We go into our neuro neurology and our memory of, oh, in fact, we, we, have, we can have miracle healings. Christ, Buddha, different beings. They would bring a person and they would simply do the Be the Light procedure, to be honest with you. I mean, I didn't make it up. I just co-opted it from the best teachers. They would simply open up in their own internal vision. They were first holding a field of pure light and intention for healing for this being in front of them. They would open up and they would receive the perfect vibrational picture and beingness of this being in front of them. And through entrainment, they would cre enlarge their bubble and hold this being who had lost their way, their divinity, their health, their emotional field, whatever, or had a dark entity in there. And they would simply let that brilliant, bright light be infused and absorbed by that being who in that moment is perfect, is finished with the earth journey. All 70 steps, the, the lotus opens in the brain, however you want to think about it, is done. Because the person is ready, they chose it, they surrendered, they let go of their fear and control and said, let me be the light. And they simply received the facilitation by the Christ, the medicine, the Buddha, the meditation leader. And it's easier to do with someone else assisting you. But the best gurus teach you to do it yourself. They teach you. It's simple. I ask and intend to sit a sacred space. I open my crown chakra to receive the light, knowing it is perfect for me in this moment. And this is how we are getting there during the day, is by employing the principles Truth, beauty, love, goodness. When Avalon said, I am using the beauty of art. That opens the aperture for every other person. As she has opened up and she is receiving the glory, the light, and the grace of that color, that movement of this otherworldly, divine, heavenly, imbued movement in art and diaphanous, illuminated energy Everyone that beholds that, guess what? They're getting that light. So you are each instruments of this light. But no, in any given moment, you are one intention away from opening up and becoming absolutely healed, absolutely crystal clear on anything and everything, and becoming the light being that you truly are at your core. I had an amazing experience a week ago. Everything just falls into place. There was a woman on Facebook who asked to befriend me, and occasionally I'll click on them, check out their energy, and I noticed that she's a completely, completely uh, well-defined, intuitive psychic and speaks with people of the 9-11 families who have crossed over, of course, in that drama trauma situation. And she had a very, very severe gift in this. And I thought, oh, it would be fun to meet her. So I just reached out and said, let's maybe do a little trade. And she was up for it. And we went and we came together. And I shared with her, and this is how we grow, I shared with her, she's feeling a little tired, so I shared with her my Be the Light meditation, and I simply opened up and reflected back to her having energy and full of vitality. And she said at the beginning, you know, I, I don't think I can do a reading or be present for you in this way because I'm really tired. And I said, oh, let me do what I do, and we'll do a trade another time or whatever. So we simply opened the light, and suddenly she felt 
so revived, so perfect, just like we all feel at the end of these meditations where we can't talk. And she just entered a state of, wow, I feel so great. Hey, your mom is here, your departed mom. She starts chirping away. And the information was so timely for what I needed in that moment. So later, I'm thinking to myself, hey, wait a minute. I know how to do that for another person. And isn't it time that I do that on myself all the time, every minute, every day, and not let that bubble of light be burst by this dissolving, disintegrating, <laughs> misaligned, discomplumerated outside external world. Of course, we have to overcome a lot of fear that people would think we're different, afraid that we're going to lose our control and uh, not make sense to other people and that we can't function. Maybe we'll forget to uh, go collect the eggs from the chicken or I dreamed of chickens last night. Or the other day, we set up a big, beautiful uh, dinner party down in the knoll, and my partner looked over, and he goes, well, everything's great, but we have no plates. And I said, oh, maybe I'm a little too expanded. Don't it beat ourselves up. It is the right place to be now, in that place of light, that container of light, so that you can exude it and be it, and let the details slide let it go. Take the time that you need to be present in that light. It's the most important thing that we can do right now for ourselves and everyone else. Because of course, here we are in a circle and we're all sitting in this circle. And as we beam out light, gosh, well, how many of there's a seven, eight, uh, seven of us? It beams out a huge searchlight, a bigger light that helps the grid and the planet and people and all that is reach new conclusions and behaviors on the planet for better outcomes. So let's take a deep breath through our nose and out through our mouth. We ask and intend to set a sacred space. We place a beautiful geometric structure around our body that matches the firmament, the natural grid that connects all that is, heaven to earth. We set our own body in this sacred space separate from everything else. We take a deep breath, and in this next breath, we release our cares for this world. We release our to-do list, the exhausting sense of should, have to, everything that weighs us down. In this moment, you can go back to it later, we are asking to be free, almost like we are filling up with a balloon with something lighter like a helium, where we have levity, and it is of entirely different nature. Take a deep breath, and in this breath, it is a heavenly breath, a higher essence, a higher octane. And this heavenly breath, imagine as it fills your lungs, it goes into your lungs, and there are little particles, name them whatever you want, little sparkly particles that go and that are now in your circulatory system and they're finding their way to your cells. They're finding their way to cells who have lost their way, fatigued, inflamed, misaligned. We're changing the signaling system within your neurology the endocrine flows and communication systems within all of your organs. We are regrading and reattuning all of the systems in your physical body now. 
We ask and intend for the divine beings, spiritual adepts who are no longer in physical bodies. In fact, my mother said the other day in the reading, I wish all my kids would quit, quit referring to me as dead. I'm not dead at all. I'm as alive as forever, and I'm here in spirit form, ready to help. I'm listening to you all the time. It's not my problem. You can't hear me talk. That's her personality. But these divine beings are here, and they understand exactly what you're going through. The condition you are in, in this moment. And guess what? Well, they're not in limited forms of limited thought patterns. They can use their intention to assist you to heal yourself right now. To heal your emotional field right now. To heal your repetitive thinking. Those patterns related to all the fear <laughs> attributes. We won't go into them. Oh, not to be named. And just take a deep, deep breath and let their beautiful thoughts and hearts and healing appendages of light, they don't have regular hands, guide like paddles through our body, moving energy. Any condensed areas, congealed old hurts, griefs, confusions, and just let it all move through like a bath of a symphony of music that your body has been longing to hear, to rejuvenate, revive, and to feel alive and one with all once again. So we're allowing all of this to happen through all of our systems and feel as this occurs, there is a new pulse occurring. And this pulse within you, centered in your heart, is profoundly and explicitly and perfectly aligned with the pulse of the divine grid of the earth, of the galactic lacy-like system of zero points and the universal grid. All of you is present and accounted for in, in I was gonna say divine aligned, delined, <laughs> beautiful perfection in this moment. Let that sense of joy and levity be felt and expressed in your pineal gland now as it records and receives this new form, this new presence, this new omnipresence, this new omniscience, this new omnipotence, all bathed in the human realm of truth, beauty, love, and goodness. For the three O's, the omniscience, omnipotence, omnipresence, are your divine levels, the golden stair steps of congealing of all that is for you as a human being, having spiritualized all of the matter within your being to this new, bright, and shiny level of freedom. Freedom. Why is this freedom important, good, wonderful, because it allows you to co-create with Source and the wand of divine magical movement within this reality, the third dimensional reality. And you can do it, of course, not by standing there and saying, I'm a divine being, I mastered the 70 steps, and now I'm like God. No, you paint a picture. It just grips people's hearts. You sing a song, and they are just flattened with 
absolute truth bumps and chills and the presence of the Creator comes into them. You lead a meditation. You behold the trees in awe. And that song within your heart, your mind, and your being goes out into the ethers and other people who are needing that frequency and vibration absorb it. So you're exuding passively by not doing anything or actively by doing what you love to do. There is nothing wrong with this picture. Mm. This is your designation. This is your beautiful little bullseye arrow in the dartboard of all the beings here to recreate life as we know it. And you get to do it through joy. You get to do it through actually just remembering who you really are and unpeeling all that you took on as you were born here to remember. To remember what it is like on earth and how it works. And you took a lot of archetypes in that you are breaking those patterns up by becoming the light over and over again until you hold the light seamlessly and spirit is showing me over and over Jan you can't afford a negative thought it's not going to work anymore it's going to hurt <laughs> we get to a certain point where we realize how powerful our thoughts are and how they just hijack us and it hurts and we don't want to go there anymore so that's how I'm feeling I keep the television off now as much as possible, except for if you binge watching a beauty principle <laughs> period things like Versailles or Marco Polo to understand history, but it's the beauty, the beauty and majesty that man can bring forth the grace through art and music and benevolent power or non benevolent as well. So let's take a deep breath. And right now, we are in the zone. Our hearts are clear. Our minds are clear. So part of the Be the Light in, uh, process is to make an intention. So let's all, in your own mind, go through this process. I ask and intend to, at this point on my journey, experience blank. Fill in the blank. And it is so, and it is done. Because in this very moment, as we are guiding in this divine state of a high frequency as we are guiding the particles around of a less of a more dense of a less enlightened state it is done it is recreated it is the magic and the power of having stepped on these 70 steps Take a nice deep breath and then just allow this intention to come through in the right timing for you and in the grace of your intention because if we use our minds to force outcomes there may be so many learning wonderful aspects to something that maybe we don't want it fixed right away. Maybe there's more to experience so that we can become more expanded into our divine messaging by experiencing that one more aspect. 
So as you make your intention, we say, for my highest good, for my work in the divine plan, with the re reawakening and transitioning of this people and her planet for higher outcomes. Excellent. And so it is. So take a deep breath, and as we let all this energy percolate around, let's put a beautiful golden resilient egg around our entire body. Hold this energy in. And we're going to come back now, and we're going to open our eyes. And often after the Be the Light meditation, uh, we talk a little bit, and there's a part of us that says, I don't want to lose this feeling. Okay, let's make an intention. Our eyes are open. We're still expanded. And here we are in our physical body, still in this world. Okay, this is how it was meant to be. This is exactly how it is. We just need a little protection. So imagine that you have a golden, resilient egg around you so that these other elements uh, don't come in and hijack you. That's why we do the beautiful golden resilient egg at the end. But we are in charge of what happens from here out to wherever we decide to expand this egg. So as your eyes are open, think, okay, look, I see the counter over there. Yes, I'm in the world. I feel my feet. But I'm still in this feeling, and I'm going to hold this feeling. And this feeling is safe. It's okay. I'm not weird. I'm not going to uh, worry about it, add any judgment that I'm in an expanded divine state. And also present here in this physical world, experiencing it, uh, yes, yes, of course, slightly different. Because everything in my body is its like looking with rose-colored glasses, slightly different sensory experience which is to be expected so we want to get used to holding it and not going back so we feel the safe and the same okay i was feeling some some of you were saying that oh i don't want to go out i want to stay in this no we can stay in this state okay so i'm going to stop the recording now and for those that just watch us uh, for the first time ever i am jan jorgensen I live in Olympia, Washington, and my website is Sound and Healing, Sound and Light Healing Arts.com. I was thinking of the next thing I was going to say, thinking, should I say it? Yes, I'll say it. I love doing personal sessions. So if you have an issue that you need some help moving through, I love doing it. It makes me feel better because guess what? I get to exude an envelope and do the whole process with you. So uh, go ahead and contact me if that's something you'd like to do. Okay.